Hello. Hello, AOS fans. It's the Agents of Sigmar. And in this video, we're going to give you a very, very quick, for us, overview of how to play Spearhead. So depending on whether you're playing with the new Skaven Tide box and you're using the armies out of that or whether you've managed to get a book separately and you've bought a couple of armies separately, the first thing you need to do is decide what you're going to be playing. Yep, you've got to decide which spearhead army you're bringing to the table and there are 25 of them to choose from. So the most important thing really is it use, only uses the core rules from iOS. So yeah. None of the advanced rules. You haven't got to worry about any of the advanced rules. And you just need to get the PDF with the spearhead in question and you're good to go. So the game takes place on a board which comes in the Skaven Tide box and it's 22 by 30, which I think is a standard GW size yeah. board. You're getting kill team or other things they've done in the past. It is double-sided, so you have two sides to choose from. You're basically choosing from two realms. So you've got the realm of Akshi or the realm of Giran or Giran, and they have different objectives in different places. They all have, both have five objectives on them, but they're in different places depending on which way you put the board up. Games last four rounds and should take about one and a half hours. If you know your stuff, maybe a little bit more. Yeah, when you're learning stuff, yes, it'll take a little bit longer. So you've got your spearhead armies. You have to choose a couple of abilities and things for them, depending on what you, what you want to do. Um, and then there's a little bit of variance in how the game works because each person gets a battle tactics deck and each realm has its own twist deck. The twist deck, you pick a new card at the beginning of each of the four rounds and it has a little ability that either the person who's losing gets to choose or both parties get a little bit of a say in if it's a tie. Yeah, and so it gives, generally gives an extra little objective that you can get extra points from when you're playing in, in that round. The Battle Tactics is a set of 12 cards. You'll generally be picking three of those each round and they'll give you objectives to try and score by holding objectives on the board or attacking things or killing things and that gives you more points. And they have really quite a neat twist. Either you can use them to score points by com completing the, the objective on them or they, underneath they have an ability yep. and you can choose well, I'm going to use that and it might give, might allow you to um, fight first in a round or do an extra move or something like that. Or cast a spell at somebody. But you can't do both of them for the one card. You yeah. have to pick. So look, sometimes you look at it and think, well, I'm never going to score that, so I might as well use the ability. And sometimes you look at it and think, the ability is so good in this to, current I've situation, I've got to use it and not, not you know, throw that objective point away. Yeah, and then possibly lose the lead if you've already got it or end up falling further behind, but possibly if the ability on that card's so good, it might help you pull ahead later on. Each round you'll roll off to see who has priority and who's gonna go first, and then from there you'll be picking new objective cards, picking a new twist card, and then taking each of your turns in the game, where you'll be moving, charging, attacking, probably dying, and at some point hopefully scoring some objective points. Yeah, one thing that's taken me a little time to get my head around is that you do your turn and you do everything you need to do. So you do your moving and your shooting and your charging and then you score your objectives and then your opponent does the other way around. And yeah. I keep thinking a bit like Underworlds where you play and then at the end you both go, oh, I've scored this and I've scored that. It doesn't do that. You basically don't have to really worry too much about what your opponent no. has done and where they are because you can move around them. But then they can sort of jump on you afterwards and, and, and do you over. There is a chance to get the Fable double turn back to back. So you might go second in the first round and then get to go first in the second round. But if you do that, you do lose the ability to draw new battle tactics cards. So you get the power of the double turn but you're not going to be scoring as many objective points. No, that could stymie your, your scoring. And I don't know, we haven't played it in a huge amount of depth yet, but I'm not sure the double turn in this game feels anywhere near as powerful. Possibly uh, not. Especially as you can bring on reinforcement, your opponent can bring on reinforcements. So you might yeah. get the double turn, wipe out a unit, and they pop it back up somewhere on the board, which is more convenient to them, which actually might end up being worse than, than if you'd just taken a single turn. So that's a very quick summary of how to play this game. You basically, four turns, score as many objectives as you can, whoever scored the most at the end wins the game. Hopefully you found that useful. If you do have any questions about how to spearhead works, do leave them in the comments below and we will try and get back to you. And remember, it's all gorgeously colour coded. Oh yes. So don't forget to like, subscribe, and ring that bell to see more Age of Sigma content. Yeah, we're going to be playing more Spearheads. If you'd like to support us on Patreon, we'd love to have you. We've got a very uh, vibrant chat community over there and they have started talking about Spearhead already, getting very mm. excited about it. And if you live locally, you can even come along and play if you're a patron. So we'll see you soon, maybe in the Age of Sigma.